So, don't usually do a deck profile and combo tutorial over here on Dueling Book, but um, for this particular one, I'm going to. Why? Because I can and because I'm here. So, Tenpai Dragons. They come out um, technically tomorrow as I'm recording this. Um, if you actually go to the OTS store, you can get your stuff a day or so early, but, um, yeah, Tenpai Dragons. What does the deck actually do? Well, this deck is a battle phase deck. Um, and it's an OTK deck. What I mean by battle phase deck is it does a lot of shit in the battle phase. By that, I mean it does a lot in the battle phase. It summons in the battle phase. It synchros in the battle phase. It stops your opponent from doing anything in the battle phase. So. <clears throat> the list is not 100% set in stone. It's fairly close, but it's not 100%. So, just keep that in mind. Now, I'm not going to read every card in the deck. I'm just going to kind of go over what they do a little bit um, and why they're here and so on and so on. So I don't make this video an hour and a half long. So, starting off with Nibiru. Why is Space Rock in here? Two reasons. One, it's Nibiru. Space Rock is awesome. And two, you need a target for Magnemut. Magnemut could be taken out and replaced with something else, but, eh, you know. Anyway, so three, uh, Primal Beam, Space Rock. Three Effect Moon. Again, secondary option as a target for Magnemut. Effect is useful. You want to go second with this deck. You do not really want to go first. So you need something that you can actually, you know, use and negate an effect and then summon out your dragon. Magnemut. Only one because they limited to one. Poor butt. Oh. Uh. Tenpai Dragon Zongdora. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This one is the level 4 tuner. And they all share the effect that during the battle phase they can quick effect summon. Quick effect synchro into a, well, a synchro monster, obviously. This one has the effect that when it's, um, let's see. Now. This one has the effect that during the battle phase, you can actually summon a monster from your deck, a Tenpai Dragon from your deck. I'll show you in the um, in the comment section. This one is the one that gets you your spell cards. Um, you either you set it or activate it uh, from your hand. Um. I think I, I'm an idiot. Okay, it's right there. I could be looking at it. Either add it to your hand or set it. There you go. So you can set it directly from the field, or from your deck to, to the field. Yeah. Uh, the green one here, um, it lets you revive a level 4 or lower fire dragon monster from the graveyard. There's not many fire dragon monsters, even though dragons breathe fire, you know, which is really weird. Um, but yeah. So, there's that. Then, of course, you know, you got your standard three Ash Blossom, three Drone Lock Bird, two Lightning Storm, because this is a going second deck, you main deck these, or at least I do. Pot of Prosperity. Which, for an OTK deck, is kind of weird. However, 
this deck can actually OTK through Pot of Prosperity. Half damage? Not a problem. You know, it's just... Yeah. Terraforming, because you want to see your uh, field spell as much as possible. Called by, because you don't want to get hand trapped. Forbid Droplet, because you don't want their monsters to have effects. And you also want to lower their attack anyway, so, yeah. Uh, then we have three of the Quick Play spell card. This card is pretty much going to be used in the battle phase. You activate this in the battle phase, you get to use both effects. If you activate it outside the battle phase, you only get to use one. If you activate it in the battle phase, you get to add a level 4 or lower fire dragon monster from your deck to your hand. And special summon one fire dragon monster from your hand. So there's not that many good fire dragon monsters to put in this deck, in the main deck, anyway, that I've seen. Um, but, you know, it, it's fine. Um, and then, of course, the three field spells. Um, yeah. It's the bread and butter of the deck, pretty much. This is one of the main things that gives you the ability to OTK through prosperity. Um, Imperm, because Imperm. Discard fodder as well as a good negate. It's useful. Now before we get to the extra deck, I'm actually going to do a side deck. Um, because it's above the extra deck in, my, in um, the one book. So, the shifter is weird for this deck. It hurts you as well as helps you. The theory behind using it is you're going first. All you do is go D shifter and then set up a minimal board. Minimal board being seals pass. Unfortunately, that's going to mean that you're going to lose two of your monsters, but it's fine, I guess. You know. Generally, under D Shifter, you wouldn't use, um, you don't use seals. So, yeah. It's very weird to play with Shifter. Um, honestly, I don't know that I'm going to keep Shifter in the side. I may take it out. Ghost Ogre, um, again, it's a light target. It's also a hand trap that, you know, destroys a card on the field. And, not only does it destroy a monster, it destroys spells or traps. So, for example, let's say your opponent has something like... Um, ready to regain. Ready to regain is an effect that is active, but you activate the other effects. Like, it's, I don't know how to explain it really. It's simple to understand, but complicated. Um, but Ghost Ogre can destroy it, basically. When you go to, when they go to activate Brandy Regain's effect to do what it does, and yeah. Um, if a card is face up and it activates its effect, basically, this card can destroy it. It's useful. Harpy's Feather Duster, because you won't back row hate. Um, and there's not enough of it in this deck. Solemn Judgment. You have been judged. So. Um. Yeah. This card is good because, well, it's Solemn Judgment. You know, it's been around for frickin' ever, and it's just good. I can't think of a single time, unless it was banned, that it hasn't seen play in some 
deck that it is considered meta at some point. Um, the downside to it is you have to pay your half your life points, but it's half your life points, half your current life points. So if you have two life points, you only pay one life point. You know. Um. So it's not. It's not as restrictive as Psalm Strike, for example, which is 1500 uh, life points and you have to have 1500 or more life points or 1600 or more life points to use it um transaction rollback and ghost meets girl this is a theory concept idea i'm not sure that i would keep it in here um it's just a thought i'm not sure it would take some doing but it could be done just need to um well honestly I was really hoping that they would you know unban heavy storm in the last ban list because then this would actually work just set these two activate heavy storm destroy your spell and trap cards and they work. But it would probably be broken like that. So. They didn't unban Heavy Storm. But these are not. Um, for sure. They're just a theory. Um, so yeah. Spin rare. It's spin rare. Yeah, enough said. Moving on to the extra deck. We actually have Rudy Rose Dragon. So the cool thing about this is when it summons, you can banish all cards from the graveyard. So this is really good for those decks that love to mill themselves to get to cards that they need. Because it basically makes it so that um you know let's say you're playing against tier elements um because you can quick effect synchro summon in the battle phase you can quick effect synchro summon into this and then when this is summoned everything in the graveyard is banished Instead of, you know, being able to be shuffled back. So this card is actually going to be a counter to tier elements. Which, thankfully, has almost fallen off the face of the planet. I really wish that deck would hurry up and fall off the face of the freaking planet. But, eh, you know, whatever. Moving on to Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. If this one is special summoned, or a level 5 or higher monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, target one special summoned monster your opponent controls and destroy it. No, oh, wait, no. Send it back to the hand, my bad. Which is always fun when they're like, synchro this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and then you're like, then like, dragon, return your big creature to the hand, because it doesn't destroy so those cards that say cannot be destroyed by card effect this doesn't destroy so it just sends back to your hand yeah it's very good moving on to the original black rose dragon when it's when it's summoned blow up the field this is zeus before zeus was even a thing as soon as its feet touch the ground, or claws, whatever, the field goes boom. Yeah. Uh, Transcendent Dragion. Yeah. Kind of a annoying card to read. 
So, if this card is special summons, you can change all monsters on the field to attack position. All your opponent's monsters must attack if able. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effect during the battle phase. And if three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, summon it back from the graveyard. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. Try it, Dragion. The big boss. This is what lets you OTK, by the way. This is what lets you actually OTK under um, Press Priority. Now, granted, you're going to be able to do that anyway, even without Dragion. But this makes it a little easier. So, yeah. When it's summoned, you can pop two cards on your side of the field. And if you do, it gains an additional attack for each one that you pop. So, summon, pop two, swing, swing, swing. And the point of that is you summon it out, you destroy one of your monsters and your field spell. The field spell effect triggers, boosting this to 6,000 attack points that can attack three times. Then you use the effect to bring back your other monster so you can attack four times. This basically ends the game. Like, there's... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bite it, Dragon. Or Dragon. If this card is synchro summoned, you can target one... Fire Dragon Monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except for Dragon Monsters, which is fine, because everything in your deck that you actually give a damn about is a dragon. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to use this effect? Uh, Singing, Rising, Rising, dr Rise Dragon, Bite It. Dragia once per turn. If three attacks have been declared, you can special summon this card, basically, from the graveyard. So, yeah. Uh, then there's Odd Eyes. So, you want to know something that's really funny? Try to Dragion, for example, or Dragon. Was it a relevant card? A card that I didn't even know that I had until I looked through my old deck and found it. And I'm glad I did, because it's a $100 card now. It's a card that has never seen actual, like, an actual reason to play it. You can play it, obviously, but there's no real reason to actually play it in any other deck. Special summon it, pop two, you can swing three times for 3k each. Cool. Um, up until Tenpai Dragons, there's never been a reason to actually play the cards. So. It's very weird, because there's like one or two printings. I think there's only one printing of it. And it's an old card it's like 10 years old 12 years old something like that at this point and now because of this very deck it is getting very expensive and hard to find so they're probably going to reprint it maybe in the tens i don't know we'll see uh same for odd eyes this dragon honestly like this is one of those weird cards that come out a long time ago. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. With this card a special summon, you can target one card in your Pendulum Zone. Special summon it. You don't play Pendulums in this deck, so who the hell cares? 
Also, this card cannot attack for the rest of the turn. Nobody cares. Uh, let's see. Once per turn, monsters in your opponent's uh, possession. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can only use that effect once per turn. Monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effect during the battle phase. So this stops the battle phase. This stops your opponent from activating monster effects that are on the field from activating during the uh, battle phase. Now, I have SP, or not SP, but IP, Mascarena, and, S and Unicorn in here because I can't find my Raging Phoenix. And I do not have SP Little Knights. I'm not paying $100 for a fucking card when I can get the entire frickin' deck for less than $100. Okay? Because of SP Little Knight, this deck would have cost me almost $300. In total, of everything that I bought for this deck, it cost me about $130, $140. I didn't order everything, but I ordered quite a bit. I ordered the Tenpai stuff, and I ordered, you know, obviously the Tenpai Dragon stuff, and some of the extra deck stuff. Obviously the extra deck monsters that I that I needed for the uh, Tenpai Dragons, but yeah. Um... I didn't order a Black Rose because I have the original Black Rose. I ordered the rest of the stuff other than, um, you know, the ones that I already had. But, yeah. If I had ordered uh, SP Little Knight, I would have paid $120 for a single freaking card. I am not doing that. That is ridiculous. I will not do that. I will wait till the reprint. Or if I can manage to find someone who wants to trade it or just get rid of his or her, whatever, I don't really care. Then I will get one, but until then, nope, not dealing with it. Don't care. Same for Raging Phoenix. If I can find mine, I'll put it in the deck. If I can't, then I won't. It's supposed to be getting a reprint in the next structure deck that comes out that's like a retrain of the Soul Burning, uh, Soul Burner structure deck. Uh, kind of like they did with Fire King structure deck. Um, it may be six months from now before we even get it, but it's fine. So, yeah. But yeah, that's, um, before anyone says anything about, uh, oh, you need this card and that card, I'm not paying $120 for a copy of SP Little Night. I'm not fucking doing that. And I can't find my Blazing or Raging Phoenix, so there's that. If I find my Raging Phoenix, I will put him in. But until then, IP is staying. Zelanthus. Honestly, you don't really want to use Zelanthus that much. You don't really use your links unless you're going first and your opponent decide, or rather you're going second and your opponent decided to be an asshole and play D-Barrier because everyone loves D-Barriers. Yeah. I play it too, but um, it kills Chimera, and it hurts this deck quite a bit. That's why you play once, so yeah. Anyway, Princess, because Princess. Hita, because Hita. Seals, because Seals. Or Spears, whatever. This is a card that you would make going first, basically just link to and pass. You can't build your big board and OTK them going first, so yeah, there's that. Striker Dragon, you need a link one, I guess, for something, so there's that. Then of course, Nightmare Unicorn, alternate art, which is fine. Um. But yeah, so that is the deck profile. Let's actually move into the combos. And this has actually already taken almost 30 minutes. So, yeah. Now, um, 
I don't know this deck like the back of my hand yet. I know what it can do. I know what it should be able to do. I know a couple combos of it. I know a couple of chains to get to the end board to OTK. I don't know everything about this deck. I'm still learning the deck. I don't even have the physical freaking guards yet. So keep that in mind. If I say something stupid, that is why. I don't know the deck that well. So I'm still learning the deck. Keep that in mind. Let's get into the actual combos. All right. So what I'm going to show you is a one and a half card starter. It's not technically a two card starter. It's not technically a one card starter because you need a discard. In this case, we have draw and lock bird, but it really doesn't matter what you have to discard. So you're going second. You draw your card. It's some random ass card. Doesn't really matter. Nobody cares. You didn't get one of your main monsters, so you go stand by a main, and then you just proceed to do this. This is when you're not getting stopped, by the way. Make this, um, yeah. This is really weird, because it's singing summoning in the, um, in the actual, like, profile thing, but it's called something else in here. Now, activate the effect of Sing and Summoning. You add a card, or a monster, rather, from your deck to your hand. In this case, you are going to add the White Dragon. And then you're going to discard a card. So, discard um, this one. You're going to Normal Summon. Effect. You're going to add one of those. Now, here's where this gets interesting. Your fire dragons are not affected during the main phase. As soon as you say battle phase, they're not affected. Or they can be affected. Anyway, so you go battle phase. Activate Quick Play, which lets you do two things. One, add the card to your hand. Two, special summon the card from your hand. Basically, when you activate it during the battle phase, you just special summon it to the field. Basically, you know. Now, swing. Yeah. Effect. With the red one. Special out the green one. Swing. And swing. Quick effect of the red one. To synchro. Seven. Into this. Now you use the effect of this one to bring back the white one. And then you swing with this one, swing with that one, effect with the white one, to go back to that, and then you're going to go into your level 10. Uh, effect to bring back this one by its own effect and effect of the green one to bring back the white one um your opponent's well beyond dead at this point but you swing it directly for 3k swing directly for 26 16 and 17 and your opponent is well beyond gone at this point Now, having said that, um, the other thing that you can do, if by some miracle your opponent is not dead by now, well, let's just say that you're under the effect of Pot of Prosperity, or they have an effect that says that they take half battle damage, right? 
So by now you have dealt um let's see, you've dealt seventeen twice. Uh sixteen and then actually hang on just a second. Let me add this up real quick and I'll give you the answer. Okay, so if you were not under the effect of um shit, what's it called? Pot of Prosperity, then you would have dealt 14,350 14, damage so far. In which case, that's fine. 7,350 damage under the effect of Pot of Prosperity, which is pretty damn good. Quick effect of the green one. One and a two. Going to trade it. Draggy on. Effect. Pop one. Pop two. Effect of the field spell. This is now. Six thousand attack points. Effect of. The dragon himself again bringing himself back. So now you swing for fifteen hundred, they're already dead, and then you swing for an additional nine K. They're beyond dead. So let me just um let me just add the total damage up without prosperity real quick. And yes, before you ask, I'm bad at math. So, without prosperity, you will have dealt 35,700 damage. That is enough to kill them three times over. And with Pot of Prosperity, you deal 17,850 all right, this deck can put out so much damage that unless they have an ability to keep summoning out defense position monsters, then you're going to win. That's just how it is. You're going to win. All right, if by some chance they are able to survive up to this point then they're playing a deck that is literally just a wall because unless you use prosperity you're putting out 35,000 damage now I don't know about you but I think that's a lot of damage okay so yeah Anyway, that was just one combo, and there's multiple different ones that you can do. Primarily, you want to start off with the White Dragon and or the Field Spell in your hand at any given time. Anytime you start, you want those two in your hand. That is all you want. Or Terraforming. Terraforming also works. You can also use cards like... Uh, Demise of the Land or whatever it is, the Metaverse, if you're going uh, first. Because then you can actually, you know, do your combo on their turn, and you can't attack. However, you can force your opponent to attack. So, there is that. Which is, honestly, quite nice. So, yeah. Anyway. I'm going to call that a video. There's only one combo, but honestly, um, if I do very many more combos, it's going to be like an hour long video. It's already, you know, a fairly long video as it is. Um, I don't want to keep making hour long videos unless, you know, it's for a series, but yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you made it to this point, do me a favor, hit the like button. 
share with your friends. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about Tamed by Dragons. Are you excited to pick this deck up? Or do you think it's just going to be another meta deck that's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with? Or what? What are you looking forward to this format? You know, are you excited for it or no? Um, and yeah. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so if you would. Helps me grow the channel. I'd like to get this channel to 100 subscribers. After I get to 100 subscribers, I will start thinking about ways to do giveaways and stuff like that. If possible. Um, and at 1,000, I'll do something else like that. But uh, yeah. I have goals in mind for every um, 100 and 10,000 or 100,000, 10,000. 100,000, and so on and so on. Like those big milestones, you know. Even though 100 subscribers really isn't that big of a milestone, it is for me. So, um, uh, I've yapped for long enough. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, share with friends, the whole nine yards, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye for now.